this episode, I'd like to talk about outputting press-ready PDF files for going to print. I'll be using Adobe InDesign CS3, but the principles I talk about should apply to almost every program. I'll also be doing this tutorial on a Mac, so if you're following along on Windows, you'll have to translate the key commands as we go. Let's get started. This is roughly where we left off in our last episode. We have our bleeds and safety margins perfectly set, and our business card is created and ready to output. Now, all we need to do is export a press-ready PDF file. Well, what is a PDF? Let's take a quick moment and give you the nutshell version. PDF stands for Portable Document Format and was created by Adobe. PDF files are incredibly versatile and are capable of containing many kinds of data. Whether it's vector graphics from Adobe Illustrator, photos from Photoshop, text from Microsoft Word, or even interactive forms, PDF is capable of handling them all. PDF files are kind of like shipping containers. They're the outer layer that keeps whatever contents they hold safe in transit. Because they are capable of holding so many kinds of data, they are incredibly useful. In our example, we're going to export a PDF file from InDesign, which will contain photos, a logo, and text. Now that you have a general idea about PDF files, let's make one. I've saved the business card document we worked on last time and called it PressCats Demo BC. Now we're ready to export. From the menu, choose File, Export, or type Command-E on your keyboard. You can give your PDF file a different name from the InDesign file if you wish, or you can leave it at the default. I've created a new folder called Output to hold my PressReady PDF file. I'll double click to select it. Next, choose PDF from the Format pull-down at the bottom of the dialog window. Finally, click Save. Now we're taken to the Export Adobe PDF setting dialog window. To give us the same starting point, choose Press Quality from the Adobe PDF preset pull-down at the top of the dialog box. This is the baseline setting for going to a printing press. The first thing we will change is the compatibility near the top of the dialog. Choose Acrobat 7 PDF 1.6 from the compatibility pull-down menu. Next, notice that there is a navigation pane on the left side of the dialog box. These seven groups cover all the pages we'll be looking at, starting with the general page. On this general page, make sure that All is selected in the Pages region, which will include all the pages of our document into the PDF. Some designers and pre-press houses like to use a multi-page document, with the first few pages taken up with in-house file data or proofing instructions. If you work that way, be sure to select the Range option and specify which pages you want to include. For now, we'll choose All. Everything else on this page is unchecked. In the left side navigation pane, click on the next page selector, Compression. The press quality preset has set things pretty close, but at PressCats we prefer to take off compression to preserve image quality. The final file size will be larger, but quality will be preserved. Under all three image areas, change the compression pull-down to None. Also, uncheck the boxes for compressed text and line art and crop image data to frames. Next, click on Marks and Bleeds in the left side navigation pane. We want to mark the checkbox for Crop Marks and for Page Information. The default weight and offset values will do fine. If you saw the previous episode where I talked about margins and bleeds, you know how to set up your document bleeds correctly. This is where that extra bit of setup comes in handy. Since you have specified the document bleeds, you can simply mark the Use Document Bleed Settings checkbox and the four values will be filled in for you automatically. If you didn't set up your document with a bleed setting, you can uncheck this box and manually enter .125 inches into each of these boxes. Under Output in the Navigation pane, we need to make sure that the Color Conversion pull-down is set to Convert to Destination, Preserve Numbers. You also need to check that Destination is set to Document CMYK, US Web Coded Swap V2. 
This is kind of the US default offset printing color space and should work fine. Under the profile inclusion policy, we chose don't include profiles and everything else is fine. Because we chose press quality as our starting preset, everything under the advanced page should be fine and unchecked. The same goes for the security pane. Make sure nothing is checked. If we get your press ready PDF file and can't open or print it for you without a password, you'll have to upload a different PDF file, slowing down the process. The summary pane is just an overview of the settings you've made. There's nothing to set there. With everything set, you can click on export and your PDF file will be generated. But in keeping with our preset management from last episode, it seems like the perfect time to click on Save Preset to create a PressCats compatible PDF setting. As you can see, I already have a preset made, but you can name yours and save it for use next time. Then, click on Export and your file will output. After exporting your PDF file and before uploading it, you should take a minute and open the PDF file in Acrobat to ensure everything looks the way you're expecting. This is the cheapest way to avoid additional art fees, so check your file carefully before uploading. You can find a written version of this tutorial and more in the Help Center on the website. Just scroll down to Design Help on the left-hand side. You'll find tutorials on exporting from InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, and Quark Express, plus product design templates and a whole lot more. Well, that's about it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. To download design templates or for more design help, visit our website at www.presscats.com. I've also created a fractions to decimals conversion chart. Print it out, hook it on your monitor for easy reference. If you'd like it, just send me an email at contact at See you next time.